Hello everyone! My name is Anton Pelcher. I am an engineer and I have been constructing fish farms for more than 10 years. Today we are going to analyze a very interesting topic. It concerns buildings for your RAS fish farm. There are a lot of buildings around. They can be large, small and made of different materials. How do you figure out something in all this abundance of information? How to choose the right existing building or what are the requirements to build a new one? This is what we are going to analyze in today's video. Be sure to watch the video to the end. Well, we'll start with the general requirements for a building. What should it be in order to optimally accommodate a fish farm? General requirements for fish farms buildings Materials and ceiling height Let's start with the materials from which this building is made. Basically, the material is not that important. The most important thing is that it doesn't absorb moisture, since we have fish holding tanks filled with water inside. And that it's warm. If the material is not warm, you'll have to make additional insulation. These are basic principles for the selection of a building. Therefore, any building other than cold warehouses is suitable for this requirement. Second thing is ceiling height. Look, there are fish holding tanks. They are one and a half meters high at this particular farm. I'm now standing on a half meter podium. I'm 1.7 meters tall, it makes 2.3 meters in total. If I raise my hand, I will not reach the ceiling yet. This means the ceiling height at this farm is about 3 meters. Basically, according to the standard, the minimum ceiling height is 2.5 meters. 3 meters is better, and the most perfect height is 3.5 meters, because there is a number of equipment and units that can be high. Therefore, it's better to have 3.5 meters distance between the floor and the ceiling. General requirements for fish farms buildings Building footing and floors What should be the footing? Well, let's combine the question of the footing and floors together at once. It can be perimeter or piled foundation. All depends on the soil. In fact, you still have to lay down a concrete slab. But there are actually two options here which are cost-effective and optimal. Economy option is when there are not enough funds and you can provide foundation for each fish holding tank. Just make, for example, a round slab in the shape of a tank and make the passages between the tanks not filled with concrete. For example, you can fill it up with chipstone or something else. This is an economy version which will be cheaper. The optimal version is in situ concrete foundation slab. And by the way, if you are going to build this farm, be careful. You definitely need to provide floor drains. If you have flat floors, then you will definitely have pedals there. And this can be a problem. Therefore, be sure to provide for the slopes of the floors. Make drains and preferably also cover the floors with something. Because bare concrete is okay, but it's better if you cover it. You can do that with some kind of polymer composition, and it will be durable and will not wear off. Also, there will be no dirt, it will be easy to clean. The second option. Here where I'm standing everything is tiled. That's how we decided to do it. Tiles are also okay, it's just a little more expensive than concrete covered with a polymer composition. What thickness of the foundation slab should I choose? The minimum thickness of the foundation slab is 150 mm, because the load is at least a ton per square meter. Biofilters or deeper fish holding tanks can make up to 1.5 and, and even up to 2 tons per square meter of load. Therefore, the maximum load on the floors is 2 tons per square meter. Basically, the 150 mm foundation slab with double reinforcement should withstand this. It's better if you make 200 mm, because it's maximum reliability and durability. General requirement for a fish farm building Windows The next issue is windows. Is it necessary to design windows in a building, or are they not needed at all? Let's figure it out. First, does fish need sunlight? I'll tell you. Generally, sunlight is good for fish, but sunlight is not good for rats, and I will explain why. Because first of all, the biofilter should work in the dark. Second, direct sunlight entering fish holding tanks leads to water blooming. 
In general, water blooming is not fatal for fish, nothing bad will happen. But at the same time, water will begin to bloom, and plaque will form on the walls of the tanks. What's my point? Those who had an aquarium know perfectly well that aquariums are usually placed in a room with direct sunlight from the windows. And after some time you can see green walls of this aquarium if you don't clean it regularly. And since the load in rest is greater, the whole process happens much faster. Actually, windows are not recommended at fish farms. First, it's basically heat saving. Because if you don't have windows, the heat goes out much slower. The heat loss of the building is much lower. If you don't have windows, you just use ordinary lamps. These lamps will provide you with round-the-clock artificial light. If there is no good ventilation system at the farm, the windows are the only option for you to ventilate the facility. Remove carbon dioxide and reduce humidity, so sometimes windows are installed. If you already have an existing building and there are windows, you can choose whether you'll keep them and let sunlight in during the day. Though you need to keep in mind that you will encounter side effects, or you can choose to simply cover or remove these windows, put artificial lighting, and do as 70% of rust farmers around the world do. The inputs and outputs are also a very interesting point. If we are talking about a small farm, it's not worth it. To be honest, usually the entrance is also the exit. It means that there are no strict standards. After all, we are not working with food production, where there are clear HASP requirements that raw materials should all be moved in one direction and final products should exit through a separate door. Yes, at a fish farm it's desirable. If we are planning a new farm from scratch, especially if it's also a large industrial one, then I recommend you to observe these standards, even from the point of view of sanitary safety, so that fry doesn't intersect with grow-out fish. But if it's a small farm located in an existing building, then there is absolutely nothing terrible if the entrance will also be the exit. This is a normal situation, which is quite appropriate for many small farms. And here lies one very interesting nuance, which you should definitely think about in advance. When you are planning door openings at your fish farm, you should clearly understand in advance how you are going to bring technological equipment into the building, because so many entrepreneurs faced that problem. Imagine you provide for a standard door opening, then you want to bring fish holding tanks with a diameter of 2.5 meters inside your building, then it's unclear what to do with them cut the tanks or cut the door opening. Therefore, either you make a large door opening, a gate to your farm in advance, through which you can bring all the equipment, or you do it differently. You provide for usual entrances and well tanks right on the spot, inside the facility. All the material, which is plastic for tanks, should then be supplied separately in sheets, and a qualified team should then weld these tanks for you. General requirements for a fish farm building Number of floors Of course, you want to get maximum efficiency and you probably think, so how can I use space more efficiently? My site is limited and it's better to build as many floors as possible. Why build a lot of one-story buildings when you can build one, three or four-story building? In theory, everything looks beautiful, but let's think how it works. The thing is that we have quite heavy equipment that which is filled with water. The load on the floor is 1.5 to 2 tons per square meter. Therefore, first, not every overlap, in principle, can withstand such a load. This is the first thing to understand. Second, logistics and transferring fish from one floor to another is not always simple. That is, you will need to get some pumps, for example, to lift your fish from the first to the second floor and back. If you want to place only fry department and incubators at the top, then keep in mind that the area occupied by the incubation and fry department is no more than 20 to 30 percent of the total area of the farm. Thus, you will have a large part of the second floor just empty. Not all utility rooms that you would like to locate on the second floor can be located there, either simply following the principle of adequacy or in accordance with the national standards. 
Therefore, I must say right away, 90% of fish farms are single-story buildings. Of course, you can invent complex technologies for transferring fish between floors, but I personally recommend that you go the beaten path, put a good one-story hangar, effectively placing fish holding tanks in it, minimizing its area, minimizing the height of the ceilings. Then maintenance of your farm will be convenient. General requirements for a fish farm building Conclusions So, let's summarize the general requirements that apply to the building. You will need one-story building with a concrete slab foundation, 100.5-200 mm thick and double reinforcement, floor drains with hydrophobic insulation for wastewater. It's also not worthy that the material of which the building is constructed should not absorb moisture. As for windows, of course, it's up to you to decide, but I don't recommend you to use windows at RAS fish farms, as they cause additional problems. Well, in fact, these are not all requirements. There is still a number of nuances to consider. I'm only talking about some basic rules. Let's now move on to the construction technology. We'll see different types of hangars and buildings. Types of buildings for fish farms Let's start with the fact that there are two options for placing technological equipment. The first is an existing building, the second is a new building. So, we start with the existing ones. Existing buildings Basements, garages, outbuildings We will combine basements, garages, outbuildings to the first group. I must say right away that these are such options that usually have small area, it's not always possible to legalize and formalize the farm correctly, and there may also be some complaints from neighbors. Therefore, think carefully before locating your farm in one of these buildings. Probably this is only suitable as a start alternative. Existing buildings, former production and storage facilities. The second group is former manufacturing facilities, warehouses, vegetable storage facilities. In fact, a production and storage facility that was previously operated and which is not in use now. In general, it's a good option. Of course, it's necessary to pay attention to the condition of such buildings, to think about what to do with the ceiling height, because often such buildings have very high ceilings. They're not always optimal for the construction of a fish farm, and then you need to make a decision, either to heat the extra space, or to lower the ceiling, or make a second floor. Therefore, yes, they're good options. You can place a farm there, but you need to look at them individually. Use those general requirements that I gave you earlier when evaluating existing buildings, and you will generally be able to pick up high-quality knowledge that will help you to meet the general principles of locating RAS. Existing buildings – agricultural farms The third option is agricultural farms. This type of buildings is more likely to be better suited for the placement of RAS than any other option I mentioned before. I will explain why. Because they were initially used for agricultural production. They are designed and arranged correctly in terms of the ratio of length and width. As a rule, they are not high in the ceilings, especially if we are talking about a poultry farm or a pig farm. In fact, the cattle farm is slightly higher, but nevertheless, they are well suited for a fish farm. But there is one nuance. Practically, in every country, we have a huge number of buildings that were abandoned. But the condition of these buildings often leaves much to be desired. You can just stumble upon ruins that theoretically suit you, but in fact require so much investment that sometimes it's much easier to construct a new building than to reconstruct an existing one. Here, of course, there is a nuance that if this is an existing building that was officially put into operation once, you can order a project for its reconstruction and you will not need lots of approvals. But this is a separate topic for conversation. I will definitely tell you about it. Well, it's interesting, isn't it? Some buildings are poorly designed, other buildings are not suitable from the point of view of ceiling height or some other parameters, and the last mentioned may be completely collapsed. Well, I'll tell you honestly, this is the reality of existing buildings, but this doesn't mean that you cannot find a really good option meeting all the requirements. It's 21st century, 
Just open a website and if there are any questions, you can always write them in the comments below. If everything is more or less clear with existing buildings, then let's talk now about new buildings. Imagine that you have decided to build from scratch. Perhaps you have a site, perhaps you just don't want to get involved into reconstruction of an old building and so on. You want to build everything from scratch. What construction technologies are used nowadays? New Building 1 – Hanger made of sandwich panels The first is a hanger made of sandwich panels. Probably many people already know this technology. Since this fairly popular, it's increasingly being used in the construction of new facilities and warehouses. If you have already encountered such hangers and understand what a sandwich panel hanger is and how it is built, please hit thumbs up button. And for the rest, of course, I will briefly explain the technology. Such building consists of two main elements, with the exception of the foundation. The first is load-bearing metal structures. That means that you have metal columns, trusses, to which, in fact, all the insulation of the building is attached. In this case, supporting structures are just columns. A special sandwich panel is installed on the outside of these columns. It can be made of different materials. I must say right away, the rock wool is the most common option, but it's not desirable if we intend to place a rust farm there. Why? Because it's fairly humid in rust and rock wool is the insulation that absorbs moisture, which means that over time it can get saturated with this moisture. It will dramatically worsen its thermal insulation properties and doom you to very high heating costs. Therefore, I'm telling you that I don't really recommend mineral wool. It's much better to use pear panels. What are pear panels? This is something similar to polyurethane foam. So, you have a stainless steel sheet outside and another sheet inside. Everything is filled with a special compound inside, like a polyurethane foam. And that's how these sheets are glued together. You get panels using which you assemble the entire building, and you get a wonderful hanger of sandwich panels, and these panels do not absorb moisture. As pier panels are the material that do not absorb moisture and comply with fire regulations. They cost almost the same as rock wool panels, maybe a little more expensive. I recommend you to use this material in the construction of your hangar. So, what are pros and cons of a hangar made of sandwich panels? I must say that this is the most common option for the construction of fish farms. In terms of price and quality, this is a really cool option. But if you want to save money on building construction, I don't recommend you to build using sandwich panels. Because, after all, it costs a little bit more than the options I will tell you about now. New Buildings 2. Frameless Hangar The next option is a frameless hangar. What is it? In fact, this is a notch that is assembled using special shaped steel. It can be delivered in advance in segments. It can be rolled with the use of special equipment. I think that you have seen such hangers many times in all kinds of storage facilities, vegetable storage warehouses and so on. A special machine rolls back this hanger on the spot. The sheet turns out to be corrugated. Thus, it also acts as supporting structure, and a special layer of insulation is laid inside this hanger. Basically, this option is much cheaper than the construction of a hanger made of sandwich panels. But it's important to understand the nuances. Of course, a frameless hanger is a little worse in operation. It's less reliable. It's probably less convenient due to its archer design. But in general, if you want to save money, this is an excellent option. The most important thing is to choose the insulation that will comply with fire regulations. Otherwise, you will not be able to put your farm into operation. I will recommend you options for insulation. Well, probably the most famous one is Tepafol. Look, it's roll insulation, which is spread out inside this hanger. Basically, this is a very good option, since it also doesn't absorb moisture. There is also a very popular option, which is spraying polyurethane foam. I must say right away, it will not comply with the fire regulations. This has already been tested. New Building 3 – Hangar made of formed concrete block If you are not in a hurry to build your farm, you don't want to construct a prefabricated building and in principle you want to save money, but build it well, your option is a formed concrete block hangar. 
Provided that you manage to find an inexpensive construction company, you can build a foam block hangar, put columns, trusses there if necessary, but instead of metal structures and sandwich panels, as in the first type of hangars which I told you about, you will, in fact, have a foam concrete block, also possibly some kind of external insulation if necessary. What are the pros and cons of this type of hangars? Its advantages are that, generally, it will be 20 to 30 percent cheaper than a hangar made of sandwich panels, if of course you find relatively inexpensive workforce. Generally, foam concrete block is a good material. There are no special, so to say, contraindications for its use. The hangar I'm standing in right now is made of foam concrete block. Yes, it takes more time to construct using this material, and that's its disadvantage. You need to construct a building made of formed concrete block. This, of course, takes more time than construction of a frameless hangar or a hangar made of sandwich panels. You need to treat this formed concrete block inside with some kind of coating. By the way, formed concrete block doesn't absorb moisture. You need interior decoration, you need exterior decoration, and perhaps even insulation from the outside. Therefore, generally, there is a lot of hassle, and a lot of cost I imposed. So how you approach this construction, and how much you want to save in general. But a hangar made of formed concrete block is also a good option. New Building 4 Hangar made of light steel thin-walled structures LSTS the next option, which we will focus on very briefly, is a hangar made of LSTS. What is it? Basically, this is the same hangar made of sandwich panels, because the panels are the same. The only difference is one thing – the load-bearing structures. Even a classic hangar made of sandwich panels, it's thick black steel. In this case, it's a thin galvanized profile that is assembled in a certain way so that the structure can carry the load. The price and the quality are quite the same. You may be able to save 5 to 10 percent if you try to construct a building using LSTS. These columns look better than thick ones made of black steel, so you might as well use LSTS instead a hangar made of sandwich panels. I will not dwell on other technologies, they are less popular. There is familiar to all of us brick construction, for example, but it's usually more expensive or worse in operation. And if you know a cool, wonderful technology that I did not mention, you can always write about it in the comments. I will be happy to talk to you on this topic. Types of buildings for fish farms Conclusions Now it's time to summarize. If you want to have a cheap building, choose a frameless hangar option. If you have an inexpensive construction team and it's not very important for you to build a hangar as quickly as possible, you can put a formed concrete block hangar. If you don't want to bother with construction at all, hire a construction team which provides a turnkey solution. And then you need to order a hangar made of sandwich panels. They will deliver it to you almost ready and assemble it on the spot. It will be a high-quality building, and that will serve you for a long time. If you have any extra questions, you can always write me. I personally read the comments, and I will definitely answer you. My name is Anton Pelcher. We know how to grow fish and earn good money from it.